Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents have built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Hello, I'm your host, Toby Salgado. Thank you so much for listening to Super Agents Live. Today on the show, we have something special. Our next guest is a super agent, an author, and TV celebrity. I am thrilled to introduce Josh Flagg. Josh, How are you? <laughs> Josh has been in real estate since he was in high school and is a main feature on the hit show, Million Dollar Listing. Using his high-end niche, Josh closed $200 million in sales volume last year. And today, he's going to share his words of wisdom. Hey, Josh, thanks for taking the time out. Uh, Hi, thanks for having me. So I've given a brief uh, overview of your background, but maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your business. Well, I was born and raised in Los Angeles. I'm a fourth-generation Los Angelino. Um, I started when I was 18. Actually, when I was in high school, I started selling high-end real estate. Um, I was licensed uh, when I was 18, and I... And I, uh, have done probably close to a billion dollars in sales in the last 10 years. So this is my 10th year selling real estate. Unbelievable. I mean, just, just, just this meteoric rise. So you've been at this, I mean, this is your whole career. You've, you've certainly seen a lot of things. What do you think the biggest hurdle real estate entrepreneurs have to overcome to be successful? Well, and not so much anymore for me, but what I would say when I, when I first got in the business was my age, you know, being young, that was probably the hardest, uh, Thing to get by, but over the years, my track record that that, that you know things changed. <laughs> no kidding. Well, I mean, so I mean, your numbers are just uh, astounding. Um, were you always uh, selling high end properties, or did you migrate to there? No, I've always done high end properties. In fact, I'm in a lovely home right now in Bel Air, a uh, nine point three million dollar house, uh, doing an open house. Its brokers open today. Huh. Well, you know, um, I talk to a lot of people, and and when uh, this type of question comes up, what I've heard over and over again is that people sort of migrate to real estate or they sell houses similar to the house that they currently live in. How did you how did you reach out and uh, and and go for a, a ten million dollar house for your first sale, for example? Well, my first let's see, my first sale was about six million. Um, <laughs> You know, I just, it, the most important thing is that you know the market and you know the inventory. And I always knew everything that was happening in Bel Air and Beverly Hills. And um, because of that, uh, I was able to go on a listing appointment and impress the sellers enough to get the listing. So that's the most, I always tell everybody, you know, I do uh, classes sometimes for people. Uh, and I mentor people, you know, through my website, through joshfly.com. And what I always tell people is the most important thing is you have to know your inventory and you have to know what's going on better than anybody, better than your competition, because that's what's going to get you the listing and that's what's going to get you the sale. So let, let's say that you know you know the inventory really well. You know that mm-hmm. market. Um, right. uh, and you're, uh, for you, you're an 18-year-old guy or let's say somebody else, maybe they're a 28-year-old person. I mean, mm-hmm. How do you then – how do you get an appointment with the, the, the person who wants to list their house or how do you find those people? You have to – well, you have to market yourself. I always do – I'm very big on mailers, and I'm very big on email blasts. Um, it, you know, if you farm a certain area, that's the best way to do it. If you don't uh, stay in that exact area, then it's, it makes no difference. It's just – it's just uh, – it's going to make no – it's going to make no difference. You have to stay in one certain area, and you have, to, you have to stick to that area, and you have to be consistent, and you have to mail multiple times a month. So you do, you do both email and print uh, marketing? Include and also Los Angeles Times, and and, and uh, where are you seeing the best ROI? Um, uh, in terms of, well, in terms of what? Well, you're spending money on in uh, in the paper, on mailers, and email blasts. You certainly want engagement from those channels. Where are you mm-hmm. seeing the most number one engagement? And then uh, secondarily, where are you seeing uh, that you're getting listings from? I would say probably from the newspaper ads. Everybody looks in the newspaper still you know, when they're looking for house, regardless or not, if they're on the Internet. Um, so I would say definitely um, from my full-page ads in the, in the L.A. Times. 
I'm sorry, did you say full page ads? Yeah, I take full page ads out. Wow. Well, that's that's not something that most people can do. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, then I would say for most people, um, well, it's really not that expensive, actually. I mean, really? if you If you work for a major company, they buy things in bulk. So, like, if you work for Coldwell Banker, for instance, they get a bulk rate because they buy so many ads in the paper. So it's really not as expensive as it sounds. Uh, do you, would you mind sharing uh, what that would it cost? Does, I don't know what market. They, it depends gotcha. what market they're gotcha. in. You know, it's completely different everywhere. So the so okay uh, so this is a question uh, that I ask normally um, and it, it, with your background uh, it may not apply but let me ask it mm-hmm. so was there ever a time where you felt like it was just too hard and you wanted to quit and and how no. did you... there was no no it was never got it I love it too much I uh, I thought so well so again you mentor people you you see a lot of agents out there banging around trying to find success. What do you think the single biggest thing is that most realtors get wrong? <sighs> um, again, what I said, I said that not knowing the inventory. I think that's what people, if you don't know the inventory, then you're screwed. That's the most important thing. You have to know the inventory. Most people don't know the inventory. They don't know what's going on. They don't know what is sold off market, what is sold to who's, to who's bought it, how much they paid for it, what the reason for them selling. That's all the important stuff. And I think that's, you know, people go into listing meetings and they don't know that. And I think that that's, that's the reason why they don't get the listing because they can't, you know, show off to the seller all their impressive knowledge. So now, and you're talking, um, I, I sense that you're talking about having information that is, that you can't just get off the MLS or something. Um, I read, uh, I read some of a, a, a blog article or something that, that you wrote and, and you said when you were younger, uh, you would literally just drive up and down the street and, and yeah. look at these houses. Um, mm-hmm. how does, how does a person get that kind of inside detailed information that you're talking about? Well, there's two different ways. First, there's the title company. You, I, I weekly, I speak to the title company and I get a report of everything that's sold um, in whatever area I'm farming. So I can see everything that's closed off market as well as on market. And then, of course, also on the multiple listing service, I get updates daily. Um, and every agent has access to the multiple listing service. Well, and earlier you mentioned you said, hey, um, you should know who is selling and why they're selling it. Um, do, do you actually speak with people uh, and, and get to find that out? And how do you do that? No, what you do is you speak with other agents. You have to have a good relationship with all the agents in town. You have to. I, I do networking meetings all the time with brokers, and we sit down, you know, 20 of us, the top brokers in town, and we talk about what's going on, who's looking around, who's buying, who's selling, why they're looking around, who they're looking with. So we really just know everything that's happening. That's the most important thing. You have to know what's going on. Got you. Um, so for you, Josh, you know, can you tell us about that first breakthrough deal or that first aha moment that you had? Mm, the first breakthrough deal. Um, it wasn't. I mean, it's not really an interesting story. I hate to, you know, <laughs> bore you, but it's. It, it was just a. It was a. It was a sale. It was a six million dollar house, and I. Uh, well, actually, I guess it's kind of interesting. I saw the guy actually outside, standing outside his house, and I pulled down the window and I said to him, "Hey, were you looking to sell your house? I've seen this house on the market before, and it expired." And he said, "Yeah." And I came in the house and I talked to him, and that's how I got the listing. So was that was that intentional? Did you know that it was an expired listing? You I, no. Well, I knew it was expired because I knew the market, I knew the inventory, I knew what was going on. But it was just coincidental that I was driving by. So how do you get listings uh, today? I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure, and don't say referral. Other than referral, I'm sure you have a fantastic referral business. Well, like I said, I, there's the ads that I do in the LA Times okay. that people see them all the time and weekly. So that definitely registers with people's name. Uh, my name registers with people. And then I do the mailings. And that's really, it's all about marketing. It's about mailings and it's about advertising and people being familiar with your name. So that's how you get, the, oh, that's how you get, then of course, referrals. Right. Um, it seems uh, to me and, and probably to a lot of people in the audience that, that you just had it easy, right? And so that's true. Is it true? No, that's not true. I mean, I still had to do it. Yeah, of course, obviously it helped that, I, that I'm from Los Angeles. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm right. born and raised here. Obviously, that, doesn't, that didn't hurt. But you could put me any, any state, any city, anywhere. And um, if you know the market and you know the inventory, it's, I, mean, I know t- tons of agents that are ton of, tons of the top agents in Los Angeles are not from here. You know, they, 
they became successful, and they're not from Los Angeles. So, you know, people can say, you know, I had it easy. Of course, obviously, it was. I'm, I'm not saying it didn't help. Obviously, it did, but I don't think that I would have uh, been any less successful had I come from New York or from Phoenix or from a different place. Right. Well, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, again, I talk to lots and lots of really successful people, and on a high level, there's a couple things that 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 I've seen. Right. So. Um, if you want to be, if you want to sell a hundred million, fifty million, or hundred million dollars, number one, you need to be in a market that that has high enlisting. So that Manhattan, Malibu, Beverly Hills, uh, Aspen, uh, and number two, most of the time, those people have been in the industry for like forty years, and that's why your story is really interesting. That that you, ten years and and you've just you you came out swinging, and you still you know you're still doing it. Um, what do you know now that you wished you would have known when you started? Um, I would have, what I probably would have um, done when I started is I would have started establishing better relationships with the agents because I didn't realize how important that was back then. But before then, it was just competition. You know, it's like, you know, it's, you know, whoever gets the gets the house. But I think it's important to really keep the relationships with the agents. Not that I don't have that, but I'm saying I would have started a lot younger, establishing those relationships uh, and building them. So it wouldn't have, so I would have, it, my business would have taken off faster. That's what I would say. Because you know, clients they come and they go, but brokers they're they're there forever. They always stay in the business, and they're the people that you really have to deal with on a daily basis. Got you. You know, speaking about your, your daily basis, I mean, you 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 have a lot of stuff going on. As I mentioned in the intro, you are on TV, you're an author, and you're still knocking down big houses. How do you stay productive and focused on a day to day basis? It's hard. I mean, it's really really hard. And don't forget, I'm filming almost every day too, which is which is. Uh, which is a lot of energy. People don't realize how much energy goes into that. I mean, I be, I just, you know, I just, I have a, a routine. I wake up and I, and, and, and I just go at it all day. I go to work and I just don't stop. Well, can you talk to us about that routine? I mean, do you, uh, do you do time blocking in the morning or? No, I don't do it. No, I, I, I mean, I basically, I, you know, when I, when I go into the office, you know, I start I just the, the day starts and I don't start, you know, I don't go out for social lunches. It's just all about business until when I get home at night. Gotcha. So, yeah. Josh, can you tell me the biggest lesson you've learned in your business selling real estate? Um, biggest lesson I've learned again what I what I said about keeping relationships with agents and okay. uh, knowing the knowing the knowing the market, knowing the area, knowing what's going on. Those are the two most important things. Okay. Yeah. Can, can you share with our audience one thing that it's working for you and your business right now? Um, what is working in my, uh, well, a lot of these questions are the same answers. They're it's, 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 it's really, it's, it's, it's direct marketing. That's what it is. It's mailing out to certain areas and keep mailing to those areas and not mailing to thousands of different areas because, you know, one piece here, one piece there in the mail, you have to just mail mass amounts to a certain area. So people familiarize yourself with them. That's the best way. And it always works. People, if they, if they recognize your name, then they're going to call you. So, so mailers. Uh, you talked about email blasts. Uh, you, uh, uh, L.A. Times um, advertisements. What about social media? Are you using? How do you use Facebook or? You know, I mean, for my business, it's it doesn't. You mean so? You mean like Zillow and those kind of things? Well, yeah. I mean that obviously those upload from the multiple listing service regardless. That's no matter what. But in terms of selling houses through Facebook and Twitter, I, it doesn't. That doesn't really help me. Especially, I mean, the, the price range that I'm selling, it doesn't really. Uh, I don't know. It does, I, I don't think it affects my business, but you know, I still have a whole. Uh, I have people working for me that are constantly updating um, onto my Twitter and my Facebook. But um, I don't know how many people are buying and selling houses over Twitter. So, so but I could just be old fashioned. I don't know. That's I. I, I the way I do is, is I open up the, the, the newspaper. I go on the multiple listing service and I look for property. That's how whenever I'm looking for a for a house, that's what I do. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and again, we are getting some similar answers to these questions from you. But uh, so let me ask this. What is, is something I didn't ask you, but I should have asked you? Hmm. Um, I mean, I think that I conveyed everything to you. I think I told you all the I, – I think I, I think I pretty much gave you all the uh, – you know, I'm not a genius. Or I'm not a – I'm not a uh, – I'm not super good at what I do. I'm just – I know my – I know the market and I know – and I'm and I'm dedicated, and I think you put those two ingredients together, and and you know you can't fail. 
there's That's really it's not there's not some secret. That's interesting, Josh. It it is. It's this, this is a this is a very different interview than than what we normally hear, and it's uh, it's intriguing. Well, what do you hear me. mostly? People, what do they tell you? Um, um, well, you know what? I'll tell you what. When we get off this, I'll send you I'll send you some links, and you can listen to uh, um, to some of the people we've interviewed. And we've we've had some great guests. We've had uh, you know Dave Jenks of uh, the Real Estate Millionaire. We've had Pat Hyben. He's a billion dollar guy. Uh, Patricia yeah. Cliff. I don't know if you know any of these folks, um, but. Um, but I, I'll send you some links, and, it, and I'd, I'd love some feedback. But l- we'll wrap this up with a couple more questions. Um, if you could only recommend only one book, what would it be? A real estate book, or you mean any a, any, any kind of book? What's your be- favorite? Great Gatsby. <laughs> Great Gatsby. Okay, all right. Um, do you have an internet tool like an Evernote that you're in love with that you can share with our audience? Um, I we use Evernote sometimes when I'm doing my speeches. Um, I use Evernote for uh, when I'm conducting. Um, online classes, uh, mentoring people through joshlag.com. We'll, uh, everybody will sign in through Evernote. Yeah, we will use Evernote. Do you have a different internet tool? Um, no. I, no. I was, I was, I was going to say Evernote. Oh, you were. Okay. Um, do you have any personal habits that you think that have contributed to your success? Um, yeah, I'm very OCD and I'm very, I'm very, uh, I'm very determined, and I don't give up until I until I until I win or I beat it. You know, got it. So that's probably it. This next question, I think, uh, I think I, we all know the answer to, but I'm going to ask you anyway. What are the first three steps a new agent should do to begin building his business in the next ten days? It's the same answer: it's yep. marketing, marketing, marketing to to the, to the area that you want to farm. Okay, and you just send out. Lots and lots and lots of piecemeals to that area, and eventually, you know, if you send that to one in a hundred and one 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 clicks, and we got one sale, then you've paid for it. Right. Well, Josh, give us one piece of parting advice, and let us know where we can find you, and we'll sign off. You can find me at joshflag.com, um, and my parting advice is: know your area, know your market, know your inventory, and you'll be the best at what you do. All right. Hey, Josh. Well, you know what? Who else should we have on the show? Who do you think we should interview who can give us some good information? Um, <laughs> any, anyone who's a top producer in, 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 different, in, in any different market, I would say. I, I don't really, um, you know, I, I, I keep up with my, with my peers that are doing what I do in Los Angeles, but I don't really, you know, follow up with uh, other agents from different states. Okay. Um, but you could have uh, my co-stars on a show. I would love. I mean, good. would you in, get, make let us uh, intro us to them? Sure, no uh, problem. Who, yeah, that would be great. I will follow up with uh, with Will. Uh, well, Josh, okay. hey, thanks for taking the time out today. It's 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 been really really nice having you on the show, and uh, we'll it. send you those links. My pleasure. Thank you. See you, Josh. Well, you heard it, folks. That was Josh Flag stressing over and over again that you should know your inventory, and you know what? I actually hear that often. Choose an area and be dedicated and determined to know every scrap of data about that market area. In an earlier interview, I spoke with Patricia Cliff. Now, Patricia is in Manhattan, and she told me that she learns her inventory and market all the way down to trash truck schedules and routes. She can tell you when a particular street will be noisy and why traffic could be difficult. The other thing that Josh stressed was marketing. I found something interesting about Josh's marketing strategy. He doesn't do any social media and doesn't market himself or his properties on Zillow or Trulia. He does, however, use old school media, LA Times ads, albeit full page ads, and print media. It's interesting in Josh's high and niche that he's using these marketing channels to the extent that he does. So for you out there, take a look at your marketing strategy. What have you tested? What's working for you and what's working for others in your market? This ties into that other thing that Josh said. He said that he wished he would have started forming relationships with other agents and brokers earlier. He does this to gain granular insight into the inventory in his market. He gets to know who's selling and why. Is this something that you are currently doing? I hope that you can take one thing away from this interview and implement it in your business today. If you've enjoyed this session as much as I have, please go to iTunes, subscribe, and give us a rating and review. Hopefully it's a five-star rating. You know, we're early into this podcast journey, and all iTunes cares about at this point is ratings and reviews. So if you want to continue getting these free coaching sessions, please help us out 
by giving us a review and rating, as well as telling your friends. Please help us build this audience. Oh, by the way, if you do give us a rating and review, I'll definitely call you out on one of the next episodes. So until next time, I'm Toby Salgado, and I personally thank you for listening to Super Agents Live.